okay <laughs> okay thank you very much friends uh, for joining this session and um, starting the kubernetes journey or some of you might already know the, the basics of kubernetes but then this is more a hands on kubernetes interaction because there is thousands of videos you can watch um, about kubernetes per se and there's a huge ecosystem there is so much information about kubernetes but then uh, the focus is of of this um, sessions is for you all to uh, pay attention and understand this concept and do hands on so the focus is on hands on and there is there could be thousands of videos and uh, you know thousands of pages of documentation but then some of your question simple question only when you ask and interact with other human beings you will get a quick clarity right so that is the two purposes uh, mainly for you ask all questions any question silly questions are most welcome so that you can get the clarification because kubernetes is like an elephant and we are all trying to explain it from from different point of view but then each one of you uh, you will be mastering kubernetes so uh, i mean, need to master kubernetes uh, in, in the long term career uh, so uh, having good experience i mean good mental models about how this kubernetes works and hands on experience uh, is a requirement right so that is the focus of uh, these sessions now um uh, this but the, as this is the first session i want to start with like what is kubernetes and, and you know the big picture and at the end of the session we will just install lens which is an ide uh, to monitor and manage a kubernetes cluster that we will go but then mostly i have around 6 15 slides here which we are going to start and and all this uh, this slide is already present uh, in in this website here on on session 1 i'm just going to go through this okay so now in um, what is kubernetes kubernetes is a, is a software project which is spun out of google as a free and open source uh, container orchestration platform and it was built from lesson learned uh, by working on and managing google's own uh, infrastructure and websites such as the google search engine and gmail and youtube and and the android suite of applications uh, so google whatever it learned over decades um uh, they created the software out of uh, all those experiences and made it uh, as a free and open source software and donated it to a cloud native computing foundation which is part of linux foundation so that it is vendor neutral it's not that only google can say hey it's only our software we will make all decisions the all these uh, decisions are uh, made uh, in a very collaborative way uh, so that uh it's free and open source and anybody can download and use it and obviously there's a huge ecosystem of companies who will provide you support so kubernetes is the google scale data center management software for you at your fingertips uh for free this is one of the simple definitions um if you go back in time like there was mainframe then there was unix and then we have all had linux and windows on premises data center then public cloud came and now i personally believe next 20 years it is going to be kubernetes because uh, kubernetes solves almost all of the problems of uh, deploying and maintaining and scaling any application or workloads uh, so i believe uh, all companies across the globe small medium large will come to kubernetes and when it is containerized and orchestrated at scale and one of the possible ways also to go serverless but that will come bit later but across the globe i personally believe uh, kubernetes is the way software will be deployed managed scaled and are upgraded the whole life cycle and currently as you all know these are all some of the problems which we face in a medium or a large size enterprises where there's like thousands of um, operating systems running hundreds of applications running like uh, 
in in calgary itself i worked for canadian pacific railway and husky energy and um, sport check or canadian tire and few other companies where we had like you know we had supposed to manage many thousand linux and windows servers and i've seen all of these problems and more and i believe each one of you would have come across all these change all these uh, problems like you know incompatible versions of operating systems or virtual machines interpreters or libraries and frameworks and then if the operations people patch the operating system then something some part of application will break and there is cyclical dependencies between like you know application like if you have this framework it depends on this library and then it needs this jvm and it depends on this library so if you are patch or upgrade any of these components then something else will break and then you have to uh, upgrade the other components and then it's like cyclical dependencies and then uh, as a data center person for the past 20 years uh, my job is to provision the operating system deploy the application then operating system patches and set up load balancing health checks and storage and networking and firewall all these things on premise some of the data some of the application will be on premises some of them will be in the public cloud and then uh, and it all dip, uh, supported by the vendors like even few years ago oracle was not running on a virtualized uh, environment for example right so that vendor can say hey look my application is not supported on public cloud not on virtual machine physical machine right so then you are constrained and and you know many of the application upgrades or patches uh, we can get a approved um, downtime only like you know 11 pm on a sunday night or a 4 am as an operation person i've like many many nights i've stayed uh, at my workplace to patch or upgrade uh, you, you all know this problem and then another problem is uh, developers i mean this is the friction between developers and the operations people developer will say hey look it works on my machine <laughs> and the operations personnel is going to say look it's not working on the server but then what are you going to do because the versions are different there and the different versions is different here so problem so th th there is many more problems which we have right so uh, any questions now or do any of you want to share any other problems you currently have okay if there's none um, i'll continue uh, so what happened at um, google is that see google is, is a large enterprise and all of us are consuming google software and google have been developed a a a a, a software orchestrator called borg over many years and uh, fortunately somebody at, at google decided okay let, let us make it free and open source so whatever the lesson we learned will be useful for everyone and that is how kubernetes was born at google by google people who have automated all software and, and solved how to run software at scale so even though kubernetes is, is around five plus year old software used by hundreds of thousands of companies across the globe even before that for like more than 10 plus years it was battle tested at google at google scale not like you know 10 user 100 users uh, at google scale it was uh, used at google for like 10 plus years and then only started life as, as kubernetes and kubernetes itself um, is more than five year old and used by uh, like you know companies across the globe and and i i've like you know, spoken to people who have scaled to many thousand nodes uh, reliably well, and and Google themselves they've made a public statement. They say they they create and destroy uh, more than two billion containers a week uh, across uh, Google. So uh, the whole idea of Kubernetes is to scale at a bigger scale uh, uh, with uh, high availability. Right, so these are some of the problems Google solves reliably over many years already. Now, um, a picture uh, is worth thousand words, and uh, this video is worth more. So let me see if I can um, show this video for a minute, because I believe this video 
will be useful. So please give me a minute here. Okay, let us start this video. Uh, do you hear the audio? Can somebody unmute and let me know? Yes, I'm able to hear you. Yeah. Uh, the audio which is coming in the YouTube. No. 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 Okay. No. Hmm. Okay. Let me try then. Let me see if there is any option here to share sound. Let me know if you can hear it. With 3D Do you? Animations. Kubernetes is the number one yes, yes. container orchestration awesome. technology created and open sourced by Google based on its many years of experience in running software at scale for its software such as the search engine, the YouTube, Gmail and other Google products. It is also the fastest growing container orchestration software which is used by hundreds of thousands of developers and data center operations team across the world. This video provides a bird's eye view of the architecture and the functionality of Kubernetes. Like Linux, Kubernetes initially looks like a complex piece of software, but once you understand some of its abstractions, you will become comfortable with it. Kubernetes is stable rock solid software already used by tens of thousands of companies in production and it can hosted and managed Kubernetes services for as low as 10 cents per hour. To master and use Kubernetes in our workplace, one of the first steps is to understand some of the abstraction it brings such as pods, deployments, services, ingress, etc. In these videos, we will see the functionality of Kubernetes from the point of view of four personas. Okay, I'll stop here for a minute because uh, th this gives you a bird's eye view of the whole Kubernetes cluster. See, in the leftmost side, you will see um, two master nodes, one in the front and one in the back. And then right side, um, at, at the bottom, you'll see the compute nodes. And the three personas are the SREs or the operations people, and this is a developer. And these are all the application users or testers. So now the SRE or the operations people's job is to set up Kubernetes per se and set up the load balancer, master and compute nodes in whatever environment. And then the developer's job is to you know, develop the software using whatever the IDE they choose, and then using a CI CD pipeline, push it to the Kubernetes cluster. And then the developers and the testers are going to consume it. So in a very high level, this is the whole of um, Kubernetes. And I want to show you another uh, point of view here. DevOps, also called in a second. SRE, developers, testers, and users. Kubernetes is currently maintained by CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which is part of the nonprofit Linux Foundation. Kubernetes is used and supported by all top IT vendors in the world. You can visit landscape.cncf.io 
and see the list of many cloud native projects. Friends, welcome to this new world of scaling software. Thank you. Uh, I also want to show another animation quickly so that you can create a high level view or a mental model of what is this Kubernetes and how it does. Okay, so now you will have few master nodes and compute nodes which are part components of Kubernetes and these will be set up by um, mainly the operations team or you can also uh, get a as a developer get a hosted and supported uh, managed Kubernetes. Uh, otherwise, these are the main components of um, Kubernetes, like there will be a um, Cube API server and a Kubernetes controller manager and optionally there will be internal DNS and a cloud controller if it is running in a public cloud and this component is not needed if it is on premises. And then a scheduler is needed because when you deploy any application and if you have hundreds of nodes, a, a scheduler is the one which decides like where your compute should go and, and, and be placed. That's, and then ETCD is the database which uh, is managed by Kubernetes to store the current state of the cluster. So that even if somebody pulls the power cable out of this uh, node here, uh, the Kubernetes API server goes to ETCD and says, hey, what is supposed to be here? And then if there's one missing pod, then the API server will create that pod in another node, which is available, right? And then uh, almost always you will have two um, uh, of everything in Kubernetes because there is no single point of failure. Right, so if you have one master, you will always have two master node where everything is replicated and highly available. So even if this one node goes down, the other node will have all the details and even this ETCD databases will be in sync. Okay, and then obviously you'll always connect through this to a load balancer, high availability, and then to manage your Kubernetes itself, you will use either a kubectl command line or this awesome lens IDE, which we are going to cover in this session, right? And then nodes are the compute nodes. And as you can see here, there can be multiple types of application. Like there could be node.js, Tomcat, or MySQL or Postgres database can run, Go application, PHP application, Django and Python or JVM. Uh, any application you can compile and put it into a Docker uh, container uh, will run on on Kubernetes, right? And then th there's lots of uh, components uh, uh, here, like kubelet. Uh, it will be running on um, uh, the compute nodes. It will have multiple components, like you know your um, network component, and then you will have a load balancer uh, for ingress controller. And then the developers a developer will have access to this Kubernetes cluster and he will develop using his IDE and then he will create the container using a Docker file and then there will be an application definition of how the application should be deployed. It will be stored in a Git repo and then a CICD pipeline can be configured to take your container and, and deploy it inside Kubernetes in a very high level. It could be any type of application.